Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Today we're going to get into this Commodore VIC-20. First of all, we're going to start with the power supply. We're going to work our way through the system and we're going to figure out whether or not this thing works and sort it out. Let's get into the power supply first and make sure that's all up to snuff. Okay, folks, this is the power supply then for the Commodore VIC-20. It's a sealed unit. And in fact, as you'll find out in a few seconds, the transformer itself inside the unit is potted in resin. We've got a four pin <laughs> DIN on one end and then a standard British mains three pin type plug on the other end. You're going to need some pretty hefty tools to get into this. I used a spudger and a flat bladed screwdriver to pry the case apart. Once you've pried the case apart, the bottom pops off and you are actually going to have to break a few of the tabs in here so you're going to use some force in order to pull this apart and as you can see when we look inside here the transformer is just encased in resin a potting compound so this power supply outputs 9 volts AC and 5 volts DC and that supplies the motherboard of the Commodore VIC-20 in here, there is a little PCB. Very carefully, if we pry this up, we can see in here that smoothing capacitor. And that smoothing capacitor is an Elko 4700 microfarad smoothing capacitor. There's a bridge rectifier made out of a few diodes. And we've got a little tantalum bead over here and a resistor as well. So I'm going to be very careful how I do this because the semiconductor here is potted into resin. The first thing I did was just a scribble up what the capacitor value was because ultimately it's going to be the capacitor that we're going to need to replace. Before we replace the capacitor, we'll just do a quick test with an oscilloscope and see what the output looks like. But then I found a couple of low ESR capacitors that I've put in parallel in order to make up a value that's very close to 4,700 microfarads. So one thing I'd forgotten to do was check the fuse. Make sure this is unplugged first because the fuse is clearly on the mains side of things. And we'll just go ahead and use the multimeter here. The multimeter says, this fuse looks good and uh, there's no corrosion or anything like that. We'll get that back in the fuse holder. And then I think what we should do is turn on the power supply and have a look at the output waveforms. Now, clearly we're gonna be operating on live equipment. So if you're not trained in operating on live equipment, get yourself some training before you do this first or just don't bother. <laughs> So it's plugged in and let's look at DC voltage first. We're expecting one of these pins, one of these outputs to offer up a five volt supply, five volt regulated supply. So it's very careful about where we put our fingers here. What do we have here? 11.3 volts. Interesting. 11.3 volts DC. Now, how do I change to AC with this thing? <laughs> so this here is the output of the transformer coming into the regulator PCB. The output of the transformer is giving us 10 volts AC into the DC regulator PCB. That's quite interesting. Also here, there's a secondary winding that I can see that you can't easily see. I'll show you that in a few seconds. Oh, there we go. We've got 10 volts AC coming out of the secondary winding. That's not looking right at the moment. We should be getting a DC voltage out of here. So we're expecting to get 5 volts out of there. And we're getting 11 or 12 volts out of there. That is a little bit scary. So I wonder why. I'm going to do some investigative work and see if I can figure out what's going on. I don't know if you can read that. The transformer itself says 9 volts AC at 1 amp. 5 volts DC at 1.5 amps. 
and the fuse was 160 milliamps. We know the transformer's working because we're getting 10 volts coming out of here. And this is the DC supply regulator. So we should be getting five volts coming out of the DC supply regulator, but we're not, which is a little bit scary because if this power supply has been plugged into the VIC-20, then there's a high probability uh, that we've over voltaged some parts in that VIC-20, which is gonna suck. And then we've got a secondary winding just here. If you can see that, there's one terminal there and one terminal there. And that there is the 9 volt AC output. So that appears to be working just fine. This, however, this circuit here, the 5 volt regulator, doesn't appear to be working very well at all. So having done some research, it would appear that these devices are def adapters. Effectively, what happens is the regulator IC in here gives up the ghost and when it shorts it doesn't fail safe it actually dumps the entire contents of the uh, the bridge rectifier and the capacitor straight out on the DC terminals so there is a high risk there's quite a lot of damage that has taken place to the Commodore VIC-20 because ultimately we should have 5 volts out of here but instead we've got 12 volts DC coming out of here that really sucks so there might be some chips blown in the Commodore VIC-20. We'll find that out a little bit later down the road. What we need to do now is we need to resolve the problem that we're facing here um, by removing this PCB and putting something else in place of it. Uh, probably a 7805, something along those lines, which again will give us a good 2 amps at 5 volts. And there's a large heatsink in here that we can make use of as well. So let's go ahead and make those modifications, get this power supply up to snuff, and then we can have a look inside the VIG-20. Uh, I scribbled down a very basic diagram. So we've got 240 volts AC coming in on the primary winding of the transformer. There's two secondary windings, both of which are pretty much 9 volts AC. Um, although this one seems to be dumping out about 12 volts after it's been through bridge rectification, which is quite normal, by the way. Bridge rectification does actually increase the voltage output ever so slightly. And there's the capacitor. And then this is the guy that's failed here. And this guy is the little regulator IC and unfortunately we've got 12 volts coming out of here but that said we've still got a good 9 volts AC coming out of here so both of the windings of the transformer and the transformer itself appear to be working okay right let's get on and repair this thing all right so a bit of careful unsoldering and we have removed the PCB uh, now we need to start basically cracking this Oop, there we go. Getting this transistor out of play. And the plan is to replace this with a Commonal Garden 7805 voltage regulator. So I have successfully removed the old transistor with a screwdriver. I've bent the old heatsink tab back and now my plan ultimately is to fit this new 7805 in its place and drill a little hole through here so that we can uh, put some silicon heatsink compound on it and get a nut and bolt through it so here's the mucky icky bit we're going to put a little bit of heatsink plaster on the back of here smear it on good and proper Make sure there's plenty of surface area to contact. Jolly good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this, we're gonna put this on the other side so that actually we can get further down. And that, and it really doesn't matter as long as it's in, in contact with the heat sink, that's the important thing. We're gonna screw, pop the screw through that side and we have a nut pop the nut on that side and then all we've got to do and there we have it folks 17805 voltage regulator fitted into a Commodore VIC-20 power supply so I've decided to go ahead and create a brand new PCB it just 
easier than uh, than mucking around. So one of the things I'd like to do is just remove some of these old diodes from here. I'm sure these diodes are fine and we can reuse those. But we won't bother with the capacitors and that kind of stuff. Okay, folks, so that is the bridge rectifier sorted. And what I've done is I've actually drawn the circuit diagram with Sharpie <laughs> on the other side so that I can see what I'm up to. And if I ever have to do any fault finding in the future, life will be much, much simpler. So I always like to test my circuits in a modular way. So I've literally, I've just bodged this in there for right now. Meters set to uh, AC volts. So we'll have a look at the output of the transformer. 10.46 volts, happy days. And that's going into the bridge rectifier. If we then switch to DC volts, we should be getting a slightly higher voltage out of the bridge rectifier, which is these two here, 13.6 volts DC. Happy days. Now it's time to hook up the voltage regulator. Uh, great news on the DC meter here, then hopefully you'll be able to see, I've got that the wrong way around as well, minus 13 volts. So that's happy days. And then on the output here, we have got exactly, almost exactly 5 volts, 4.97 volts. And we have a car alarm to finish up that bit of the video. All these old components are going to get chucked in the bin. And now we have this brand new spanking Commodore VIC-20 power supply. So we'll get the lid glued back on that. And uh, we should have something now that we can plug into and test the Commodore VIC-20 with. Happy days. And there it is, folks. It doesn't look amazingly beautiful. Bit of tape around the sides to hide some of the glue joins and stuff like that. But ultimately, this unit will fail safe, unlike the original unit. Okay, let's plug this into a Commodore 64 and see what happens. We shall keep our fingers crossed. Oh, that's good news. We got a light on. <laughs> it's all turned on and we're keeping our fingers crossed. We're doing a auto tune. Ooh, that's actually, my goodness. Holy moly, it works. What the? No way! <laughs> this is epic! Epic! Epic news! Oh my goodness gracious me. So there you go, it's finally, it's found the channel, it's tuned it in. This, <laughs> this is a Commodore 64! Sorry, this is a Commodore VIC-20. <laughs> I'm so excited I can't even remember what computer it is. This is epic! Let's see what happens if we press a key. Yes indeed! keys appear to work as well right now all i need to do is figure out how to use this thing absolutely brilliant I don't believe it. I genuinely don't believe it. This is epic. I've never owned or even played with a Commodore VIC-20 before. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I've not done any research into the machine itself yet. So we'll get another episode together and we'll have a little talk about the VIC-20, what's inside it, what makes it tick. It looks to me like it's only got 4K of RAM, something like that. I've had a quick basic test. Clearly the keyboard appears to work, the computer itself appears to work, and also a little modulator here appears to work as well. So we're actually running through a regular TV signal at the moment. It might be nice to actually put some kind of composite interface on this device so that we can plug it straight into the video port on uh, future systems. This telly is absolutely epic, don't you think? It's a Diamante telly. <laughs> it's got these lovely diamonds around the outside of it. It was my mother's. I don't know why she bought it. Clearly a lady with class and taste. Um, 
<laughs> I shouldn't say bad things about my mum, I love her. Anyway, um, yeah, and then we've got the Commodore um, VIC-20 cassette player. Now, uh, I've plugged that in, and for whatever reason, nothing happens. We don't get any movement on the cassette. There's no power light or anything like that coming on. So I think perhaps uh, we got a little bit of work to do to fix up the cassette tape mechanism. But wow, I am absolutely stoked that the power supply mod uh, worked. I'll tell you what I'm really glad about is the fact that I didn't plug that power supply in to start off with because clearly there was a problem with that power supply. It would have blown up most of the chips on the motherboard of the VIC-20, which would have really sucked. Anyway, as always, this is a fantastic, momentous day. <laughs> As always, thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget to give us a big old thumbs up. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Cheers and beers, people. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and weekend. Bye for now.